Hey guys and welcome to Faywood. So this is the very last um, necklace video that I'll have for you guys where we finalize everything on the necklace and I show you how I finish off um, and do the backing and everything. Now you can see I'm using E6000 glue here and I'm being very generous. I'm covering every single part of the back of the necklace. I really want to not only um, use this to glue the next layer on, but to also keep the stitching really strong. By having the, all of the stitching glued in some place on the back, if something did happen to come loose, it won't make everything else loose um, as well. So it just adds an extra layer of strength. Now you can see I'm now putting it on top of another piece of lacy stiff stuff. Um, and cutting that out. Now the reason I'm doing that is to really um, make it nice and smooth on the back because we've got all that wire work happening um, and you know it can you can feel that if you were just to put um, ultra suede straight on the back you would feel the wire work through the ultra suede because ultra suede isn't the thickest um, thing whereas when I put this backing on, it'll make everything absolutely smooth and you won't feel anything um, once I've finished off the necklace. So you need to trim it nice and close um, right up to the other piece of lacy stiff stuff. Now this is a great opportunity to do any last stitch work that you need to do. Um, and by that I'm talking about reinforcing. Um, of course if you did think of anything else you wanted to beat on there as far as the design went you could do that as well but I'm actually going through a lot of the um, out, outer stitch work to make sure it's really strong. Um, you can see I'm going through a lot of the black beadwork there because um, some of that is sticking out from the piece itself and so it can be um, not as strong and so just by adding some additional layers it will uh, make it stronger just um, layers of stitch work I should say and I did a fair bit more but I didn't show that because I thought it might be a little bit boring um, now you can see I'm running out of glue there with um, this glue so I pulled out a new one it's a dual bond glue which is like a PVA um, this layer is just to put the ultra suede on the back so I make sure that the glue is really thinly spread out because otherwise it will seep through the ultra suede and I don't want um, any patches where you can sort of see the shiny glue sort of um, seeping through. So I'm really careful to um, evenly distribute that with a skewer or something like that. Now I've mentioned my ultra suede pieces before but I buy them in large pieces. Um, I found a seller on eBay. Um, if you are in the market for ultra suede, check eBay for ultra suede and you can often find large sheets of it instead of the small sheets. I find a lot of the small sheets that are sold these days aren't big enough for my collar pieces and I do not in any stretch of the imagination want to use two pieces of ultra suede joined it's just going to look messy so I definitely want large pieces of ultra suede so same thing cut all the um, excess off and just be very careful it pays to invest in a nice sharp pair of um, embroidery scissors which are generally just very small scissors and I'm often replacing my um, scissors because it does need to be really, really sharp to get into the little tight shapes and things. Now once all the layers are there, it's time to um, edge the piece with either beadwork or something else. Now I've actually chosen to use a, um, a ball chain, which is I think a 1.5 mil um, or one mil maybe, um, brass ball chain. Now this is just like stitching with the crystal chain in that if you stitch between each of the ball links it um, allows you to have it secure so you can pull that nice and tight and it won't go anywhere. 
and it's perfect for edging, you know, if you're not wanting to use beadwork. Um, of course, you can definitely stitch um, as you would, uh, as a lot of people normally do with um, seed beads and doing a sort of brick stitch type of stitch work. But uh, I just thought I really liked the look of the brass chain and the colour was perfect, so um, I just decided to go with this one. Now I don't cut my chain, I'm working straight from the spool and I'll only cut it when I get to the end and I need to trim the um, last bit. So doing this edge piece just really sandwiches all the um, backing together. You can't see the layers. It just gives a really nice finishing off to a necklace. I definitely would never leave a necklace or a pendant without an edge um, of beadwork or something like that around it. Now, after I did that, I decided to um, make a clasp for the back. Often I'll make a clasp that suits the necklace by doing some sort of beaded um, component that will sit at the back and I decided to make a planet because I thought that was a perfect way to um, finish off the necklace and so I made a cabochon shape of um, planet I actually used polymer clay for this and I didn't show it but I made it when I made the other additional planets and I just pressed it into a little uh, mold that I had and baked it. I used exactly the same method as I did for all the other pieces in terms of putting on the um, gold leaf and now I'm just using peyote stitch around the cabochon there and I think I did about four or five rows of um, beads. And I did it exactly the way I did all the other um, planets using the same beads. So I used a size 11 Delica and then a size 15 Delica um, in this lovely mottled metallic colour there. Um, and then I finished off the last row with um, a size 15 round. Just gave a nice look I thought to have that um, round in between the Delicas. And then I surrounded it with the same Oxblood um, opaque size 11 rounds that I used on the other planets as well. This is just keeping everything very consistent. So on the ends of the necklace I generally do use an end bar to finish things off and I tend to um, put that on with some beads as well. Now you don't have to finish it off this way if you've got some other um, idea or way that you like to finish things off then you can definitely do that but this is just how I finish this one off. Now the end bars that I have are um, a little bit not symmetrical as far as the centre. Um, there's three rings um, to what sort of three to one end bar and the middle one is um, longer than the other two so what that means is I need to use different size beads to make it even and I've used um, a chocolate brown Swarovski pearl in a size four in the middle and a size six mil um, on the outside and then I've got these little brass um, spacer beads that I use as well. 
Um, so if you've got the same sort of um, issue where not all of your um, loops or whatever off the end bar are symmetrical, then you can just use different size beads to compensate that or you can add additional spaces or slightly different sized spaces even to uh, make it line up. Um, now I didn't show it but I also each time I went through um, the loop with my beads I, I've got beads on either side and then I stitched through that beadwork probably at least six times um, because the strongest like the sorry the necklace is only as strong as the weakest point and this could end up being the weakest point of the necklace if you don't really reinforce that stitch work. So I go through it as many times as I can um, and on each loop. So I've got the same beads on the front as on the back. So it's um, a spacer bead, a Swarovski and another spacer bead. I sew through the end bar and then again I put a spacer bead, a Swarovski and another spacer bead and I'm getting a little bit tangled there. <laughs> I finally got that sorted out. Um, that can happen from time to time, so just make sure you don't pull it tight before you've undone the knot. And sometimes using a needle in a knot can help um, pry it open and you can work it out. So, now that I've done that, I go back to this um, clasp and I'm just finishing it off with um, those, I think they're 1.5 square um, beads and they're just a beautiful uh, metallic iris sort of colour. They're the same ones I used on other parts of the necklace, on the outer um, row of the necklace. And again, that just keeps it all consistent. Uh, then I'm just trimming off the excess lacy stiff stuff here and I will be um, putting a backing on this in the, exactly the same way as I did for the necklace. But before I do that, I actually need to make a little hook and eye for this to attach to the rest of the necklace. Now you don't necessarily have to make this yourself. If you've got a suitable component um, that you can attach or use for this then you definitely can do that but um, I often will make them and that just helps me make it the exact size that I want and in this situation you can see I've got that little loop component which it looks like it's a toggle but I actually bought those um, without the bar sometimes toggle sets are separate. You can buy the, the loop and the bar separately. And so I'm using the loop in this situation as something for the um, this little component to hook onto. Now you can see I made little loops there. I doubled up the wire for the um, hook part just adds a bit of strength. You really want to make sure that it is strong. Um, it's a simple component. You could make a more complicated wire work um, clasp if you so wished, but I'm just keeping this um, simple because there's plenty other things happening in this necklace. And I've just made little loops there, which again allow me to sew that onto the backing and it, it will have glue all over it um, as well just the same way that I did the backing um, on the rest of the necklace. Um, now I'm making another just little loop that will allow this to be um, secured to the other side of the necklace. Now because this part will, isn't where it'll be opening and closing, um, I'm just making a loop on that side and it's the hook that will be the clasp where you open and close the necklace.
Now you want to make these both big enough that you can bead an edge to this as well and still have enough loop showing um, that you can use it. So I'm fairly generous with the size so that I'm taking into account that there'll be a mil or two um, for edge beads or edge um, chain or whatever you're using. For this one, I also used an extra piece of Lacy Stiff Stuff. I didn't show that part, but I did it exactly the same way as I did the rest of the necklace um, with the E6000, a piece of Lacy Stiff Stuff, and then the other glue and a piece of Ultra Suede. And you can see here, I'm finishing it off with that same chain. And again, that keeps everything consistent in the design. Now I decided to use split rings because split rings are more secure um, and I use a little split ring pliers to attach those. And I tend to switch to my round nose to just continue to nudge it through where I'm needing the split ring to go. Jump rings can come free, so that's why I like to use split rings sometimes. And that's the finished necklace. Now I'm not going to show it worn until I'm doing more of the costume, but you'll see that um, in videos to come, so make sure you do hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. And I'll see you next time in Feywood. Bye guys. Bye.